Let us all stand. separate us from the love of Christ will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword no in all these things I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That you may also be where I am. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn.
died and rose again even so through Jesus God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep for this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first then we who are alive who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will always be with the Lord Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life
you all may be seated. We're in the, in the presence of the Lord today as we sat together. How many of y'all were here last night? Well, at DC3 last night. Let me see your hands. Y'all know we had three rules last night. We have those same three rules today because we want to send Daniel on with a great celebration. Somebody say amen. Rule number one, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Rule number two going to celebrate and lift up the life of Daniel Jones. Rule number three, we're going to encourage this family. I like how Tim Clifton came up last night and said, if you do number one, you're going to take care of number two and number three. So my question today is, how many worshipers of Jesus Christ do we have in this place today? Let me try it again. How many worshipers of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ do we have today? That's for the second time. How many people who love the Lord in this place can open your mouth and give him praise right now at this time? Because we know that Daniel is in better hands than any of us ever have. And so if you love the Lord, somebody shout hallelujah in this place. If you love the Lord, somebody shout thank you Jesus in this place. I want you to take your broken heart and lift it up to a holy God and tell him, in the midst of it all, I'm going to give you praise. In the midst of my tears, I'm going to give you praise. In the midst of my confusion, I'm going to give you the glory. Somebody make a bright, prop joyful noise in this place right now. Because we know Daniel Jones was a worshiper. Daniel Jones had energy. Daniel Jones was a vibe. And so if we're going to celebrate Jesus and Daniel, let's give God, matter of fact, stand on your feet and give God a praise for the life of Daniel Jones right now. Now I think we're in the right place. I said, I think we're in the right place now. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord on this wonderful day. And I say it's a wonderful day because it's still the day the Lord has made. And so we will rejoice and be glad in it this day. Uh, just for clarity and, and direction, I am Pastor Marcus D. King. I was able to be a pastor to this family for 15 years. I am also with my partner today, Pastor Stephen Brown. Uh, who was the last pastor there with uh, Daniel as he played with him. And Breach is also with us as well. And so uh, we're partnering together because Daniel had so many people who loved him. Somebody say amen. And so we wanted to work together. When you are working together and you love somebody, there is no competition. Somebody say amen. Because the day is all about Daniel and his family. Can we say amen? I said, can we say amen? Amen. Listen, you have a printed program. I want you to understand this printed program was designed by the family. Somebody say amen. Now, more specifically, his wife, his wife. And so uh, we want to make sure uh, that we follow those wishes. Just one great example. Uh, when we feel uh, that this family uh, needs to close the casket, we're going to close the casket when the family says so. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Because today we come to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, celebrate the life of Daniel, and encourage this family. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go and respect those wishes and give God glory for what we have uh, taken place. Now, you see the printed program. I don't want to do a lot of walking back and forward. And so I'm going to do this in sections. Everybody say sections. All right. Now, uh, what we're going to do at this point, uh, we're going to open it up uh, with a musical tribute. Uh, by Miss Chatney Crystal. And then we're going to have our Old Testament reading by Pastor Dwayne Hicks Jr., New Testament reading by Pastor Charles Webb, our prayer of comfort by Pastor Mac Sargent. And then we'll be blessed in song by uh, Brother Nathan Myers. I'll come back at that moment uh, in our program. Wanna, well, go ahead and put your hands together for Chatney Crystal. Come on, let's do it. Let's set it up. Let's set it up. Come bless us, Miss Crystal. I'm going to ask everyone that's on program, when you see your name, your time come, please let's move expeditiously because we know if Daniel was here, his eyes would be this big 
and he'd be the loudest person in the room. So I'm like, come on here. All right. So we want to make sure we do that. Come on, once again, let's give it up for the team that's coming to bless us at this moment. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, hey, y'all. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, since I don't, I'm not on the program for two minute talk, so I'm going to just sing and get out the way. But I wanted to, I don't want you to be alarmed on what's getting ready to happen because this is totally Daniel. Um, if you know Daniel and you really, really, really know, know Daniel, he loves Prince. He loves Prince. Thank you. One. So, and I forgot that Brisha, he proposed to you with this same song. But I switched it up so we won't be too worldly, okay? So it's going to be gospel too. But can y'all please get with us and, and clap and all that good stuff. This is for my brother. I love you so much. And Brisha, I'm praying for you, Dylan. Zay, Mama Val, I love y'all so much. The whole family, I love y'all so much. All right, so I won't cry. Let me start. Okay, let's go. I think y'all will know this one. Y'all ready? Don't be worldly like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. One, two, one, two, three. Let's go.
from Sarah. So, uh, my DC3 family is in the house. Disciple Central Community Church is in the house. We started at JC3, 1400. And um, I used to love when Daniel played this song. Mike, you got me?
shall help her and that right early the heathen raged the kingdoms were moved he uttered his voice the earth melted the Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge Salah I read to you Psalms 46 verses 1 through 7 may God have a blessing to the readers hearers and doers of his word word of God from the New Testament it says and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And here's the good news. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither sh shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. This is the word of God from Revelations 21, verses 1 through 4. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you. 
even now, just for who you are. You are our Father, our Creator. You are our friend. You are our very present help in the time of trouble. We come now to ask your presence. We ask your strength for this family. Oh God, give them what they need. Knowing that your word says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We thank you now that when we know where something is, it's not lost. But this our friend, this our nephew is with you now. And we praise you for even that. Give this family strength and let them know we are not to weep like others who have no hope because in you we move, we live, and we have our being. Bless them and keep them. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. And all the people agreed by saying amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Felt so alone, seemed no one cared. You came along, gave me a song to ease the pain and erase my shame. You could have left me standing there with no one, no one to care. But you promised me you'll be there on time. Just what you said. Thank you, Jesus. I'm at the second verse. Against all odds, I made a choice. To give God my trust And now I rejoice You promised me That you would hear my plea And you did And you could have left, you could have left Me standing me there But God made a promise to you that he would always be there on time and he will do just what he said. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hey, I gave it up and I let it go. He brought me through and now I'm here to see God. Oh, He promised me. 
one of your cries, and he will do. Yes, he did. One more time, open your mouth in this house. I let it go. I said, I let it go. Yeah. He brought me through, and now I'm brand new. Yeah. That if he said it, he will do it. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. Mama Val, even unto the fourth generation, your family line is blessed. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Clap your hands and give God praise in this house. Come on, somebody give God praise in this place. Y'all not with me. I said, somebody give. Has God ever done what he said? Well, go ahead and praise him off of what he said. Because that's some stuff you've been asking him to do and he already promised what he can you give him a praise on what he's going to do that he has not done to come somebody give God praise because he does what he says hallelujah let me try again hallelujah hallelujah listen can we give God praise for everybody who's been on program thus far amen Amen. We are so blessed and so grateful for uh, that taking place. Listen, at this time, uh, you've, been you've been a wonderful blessing, and we thank you for uh, following and doing what we are uh, asking you to do. And so we thank you for letting worship take place. Get your hands, get yourself a hand real quick. We want to make sure we get that uh, appreciated. Now, uh, we're getting ready to bring up uh, a couple of things. We're going to have... Uh, Remarks by our mayor of DeSoto, uh, Miss Pro Rachel Proctor. And as she's getting ready to make her way this way, uh, we have some special people that are here. I was text uh, that Daniel's uh, wonderful partner, uh, who it, he toured with, uh, Miss Janet Jackson, the team, has made it here. Can we give God praise for them? Good to see you. I know it's a challenging time, but we're glad you're here this day. Uh, one thing I'm mad about Daniel, mad at Daniel still about, uh, is I never got to meet Janet. I got to meet Justin. Uh, I didn't get to meet Janet. But, but Janet, I want you to know, we love you, but Daniel used to leave y'all and come fly back and play for us in the morning. So I'm mad that I can't say that no more. You know who plays behind me? Janet Jackson. <laughs> uh, Janet Jackson, musician. So listen, we're so glad to have you all. We love you. We thank you. Our family is your family, so we want to give you love. Let's give God praise for them one more time. Mayor Rachel Proctor, are you here with us? Where did she go? All right, there you go. Good to see you, Mayor. Let's give God praise for Mayor Rachel Proctor as she comes. And then Myron Butler, we're going to have you come uh, right after that. God bless you. Amen. It's already on. It should be. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
Is there anybody in the house that loved Daniel Jones? Can you put your hands together and just honor his life today? It's so incredible, and as I just look out over the room, it's incredible, and it's, 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 you know, he touched so many people's lives, and I'm sure if he could know just the impact that he would made, he would just be amazed at it. And so we pay sincere respects to his wife, to his children, to his entire family, everybody that loved him. And it's my honor as mayor of the city of DeSoto to come on behalf, uh, to stand before you and pay tribute to a man again who left an indelible mark on each of our lives. And long before, and I'm a little emotional because long before um, Daniel was a resident, his family was a resident of our city, Daniel was my brother. Um, Daniel came to play for us. We were all in high school, and uh, are there any Heaven Bound people in here that were part of Heaven Bound? Community choir, and he also played for a group that my sisters and I uh, sung. So he was uh, a brother to us, and we just began to make memories, and we just, you know, we, we had a long-standing friendship. And so it's very um, sad for me today to be here before you, but, and a lot of times grief, it can be all-consuming, and sometimes words will fail you, and and condolences seem insufficient, but to the family, take solace knowing that he was a remarkable person and a member of the DeSoto community, but he was also somebody who looked out for the DeSoto community. As Pastor King said, he was always there. Um, you didn't even know a lot of times that he was gone because he would be there whenever he was needed in the city. And I can remember he would always call me and text me about things he wanted to do in the city. and. Brisha, I remember one of the last times he called me and texted me a few months ago, he wanted to do a gospel night. And so I was like, well, we could, we could do that. And then he continued and he went on and he went on and he was like, well, maybe we could add a skating party to it too. And I'm like, well, Daniel, um, gospel night sounds okay, but I don't know if the, the Parks and Rec want us skating on their brand new gym floors that they just put down, but we'll, we'll figure it out. But that was Daniel. He always wanted to have a good time. He always wanted to do things big. And even though he was traveling all over the world, um, he never forgot about the people in the place that he called home. And so we're gonna proceed with reading. Thank you, you can have clap right there. We're gonna proceed with reading resolutions that have been lovingly submitted to the family. And these resolutions symbolize not only the impact he made, but the legacy that he is leaving behind. And so we also have a resolution from the city of DeSoto and it, it just essentially recants uh, the story of his life and we'll read that together in a moment so I won't read all of that but we have several city council members here we have city staff members here we have residents here and if you want to stand you can stand on behalf of the city of DeSoto if you are here um, to show the family that we are with you um, and it just recants his life but I want to read a, a piece of this and then we'll read the others that have been submitted and it says whereas Mr. Daniel Lee Stevens Jones Daniel Lee Stevens Jones departed this life on July 19, 2023 at the age of 41. He leaves a legacy of enduring love to his wife, Brescia Jones, and two children, Zadrian Chapman and Dylan Quincy Jones, and a host of family members, close friends, mentees, and the entire entertainment world. Now, therefore, I, Rachel L. Proctor, by the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of DeSoto, do humbly present this resolution to extend our prayers and heartfelt sympathy to the family and friends of Mr. Daniel Lee Stephen Jones. In witness thereof, I have set my hand and caused the seal of the city of DeSoto, Texas to be affixed this fifth day of August, 2023, signed by myself, Mayor Rachel Proctor, attested to by Alicia Thomas, city secretary. We also have a resolution, um, and we're just gonna read a few and then we will acknowledge the remainder of the ones that we have received. We have received a resolution from um, Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, and it says to the family of Mr. Daniel Jones, it is with heartfelt sympathy that I acknowledge and extend my sincere condolences on the passing of Mr. Daniel Jones. Mr. Jones was truly a creative who took joy in making lasting impressions. His commitment to creating memorable experiences for everyone to enjoy can be seen through his accomplished works in working with many musical greats, including Janet Jackson, Rihanna, Eminem, The Weeknd, Jay-Z, and many others. While his list of accomplishments was long, he always remained true to his Dallas roots and sought out opportunities to give back to his community. It is safe to say that while we have lost a true giant, that Mr. Jones's light will continue to shine bright in and throughout the lives of many. 
His passion, energy, and humility will always be remembered when we think about the impact that he made on our neighbors. We are forever indebted to him for his passion and leadership in all areas that he has proved to make our community stronger. The Bible reminds us in Psalm 30, 30 verse 5 that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. During this time and the days to come, I pray that God will comfort you with the peace that passes all understanding and that you find strength in remembering the amazing memories you created with him. My thoughts and prayers are with Mr. Jones's wife, Risha, his sons, Zadrin and DJ, and his entire family, friends, and all the lives he touched. His legacy will continue to fill our hearts and will inspire many generations to come. If you need anything during your time of bereavement, know that I am only a phone call away. With sympathy, Jasmine Crockett, member of Congress. We also have a resolution from Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church. And it says, the busy life of Daniel came to a close a few days ago, and it has left most of us unclear, unsteady, confused, hurt beyond measure, but still knowing that God makes no mistakes. Yes, we would have loved to have had more time with him, but God knew that he was tired. He kept saying that he was, but with the job that he had, being tired is normal. There stares us in the face every day in places that we don't even consider. The word of God tells us the grass withereth and the flower therefore fadeth away. Most people look upon death as a dark and gloomy thing, but for man, death comes at all seasons and all ages. The cradle is his. Childhood is his, the primehood of man and womanhood is his. The mighty oak retains its vigor for ages, but falls at last. The insect race fades with leaf and die with the dying year. Their span is brief, but they have finished their work and dropped into timely dissolution. Daniel had finished his work assignment and we know that he always gave his best. He was born into the Oak Grove church family and we will still claim him as our own. We loved him, but God loved him more. The loving father knows all the problems that must be faced, the responsibility that must be met, and the loneliness and the sorrow. He knows because he is God. Let us comfort one another and remember each other in prayer. Humbly submitted Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Dwayne Earl Hicks, Senior, Pastor and Teacher, Louise Jones, Clerk. We have also a resolution submitted from Disciple Central Community Church, and it says, God understands that the heart is exceedingly heavy. Our loving Father knows the loneliness that is felt. Life is a gift God has given to each of us. How we use that gift determines how much of an impact we make for his kingdom and in the lives of others. We, the pastors and disciples of Disciple Central Community Church, stand with the family and our members T Tisha Brashay Jones, Dylan Jones, and Zadrian Chapman as we celebrate the positive impact Daniel Jones has had on their lives and the lives of others. To the family and friends of the deceased who are believers in Christ, we share words of comfort with you from where we believe the only source of peace can come from. The Bible states in 1 Peter 5, 10 through 11, his kindness, in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. God basically has a plan for your healing and hope for your future during the time after your grief. Our prayers are with you during and after the ceremonies. God is great, and we are truly grateful to be a part of your family at such a trying time. May his peace rest upon you in the days and years to come as you grow closer to him in every way. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of Brother Daniel Jones. This is humbly submitted with love and affection by the leaders and members of Disciple Central Community Church, 901 North Polk Street in DeSoto, Texas. May God bless each of you and know that our prayers are available to you to help you with your healing process. Humbly submitted, Marcus D. King, Senior Pastor. And we also want to acknowledge the receipt of resolutions from Antioch Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church where the pastor is Christopher K. Wesley. Also from Faithful Missionary Baptist Church, where the pastor is N.C. Sargent. Um, are there any additional resolutions that we can get to the family? Amen. At this time, thank you for your hearing, and God bless you. We continue to have you in our prayers.
Hey, let's give God praise. All those wonderful resolutions. At this time, Myron, uh, if you would start making your way. Let's give it up for Myron Butler, you all, for uh, coming to bless us at this time. We, you missed last night. It was a wonderful time. Now, faith, where's faith at this? Where's faith? I can't find faith. Okay, faith. Is that QR code for programs? All right. So, for those who didn't, how many of y'all did not get a program? Let me see you raise your hand. All right. I've been black a while. And one thing we fight at funerals about is a program. So how we set it up is, if you hit that QR code, you can download your own program. And everybody has a program. Somebody say hallelujah. All right, so we thank you for that. That's taken care of. Also, we are live streaming. If you go to DC3's page, Disciple Central, uh, we have a, a, a company that's with us, Paul Booker, on the scene. Uh, he's streaming. We've shared that uh, link to our Disciple Central Community Church page, so you can watch now and then later on, and uh, you can make sure you take care of that. I believe it's on Breach's page as well. Breach's page as well, and I believe Daniel's page as well. At this moment, let's welcome Myron Butler and Levi. Let's give God praise for them. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Bree and the family, I want you to know that we love you, Mama Val. We love you. And uh, man, he was such a light for us. And uh, there's so many memories that are playing through my mind. Uh, but the one that sticks out is how much of a light he was everywhere that he went. And that is what will stay with us. You know, the word of the Lord says, give us this day our daily bread. And uh, there's a passage of scripture in Deuteronomy, 33rd chapter, and it says, as the day, so shall thy strength be. Every day, my prayer is that the strength of the Lord would be your portion. It simply says, give us this day. This day, our daily, our daily bread. bread you God said that He would. He said that He would supply. He'll supply all of our needs according to His riches. Yes, All we have to do is ask. I have yes. If we ask, ask in faith, then we, shall you, receive. shall receive everything you need from God. But you can't just keep it to yourself. When we leave this place, to go from here. From here and share this love you gave to me to show someone who's lost.
just had to share that with you. Now, you know, we've done music. We've been doing music together for longer than we can remember. Amen. And uh, often Daniel would just, you know, text me, you know, about one of the records that we did, and that was the Revealed record, Live in Dallas. And he just loved that record. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I pray, it, I don't, we don't want this to be like a little mini concert, but we got three songs that we want to share with you, all right, that he loved. All right, first one simply says, I choose to believe. All right, you ready, Robert? All right, clap your hands with us. another song that we sang back on the first record said he's gone away to prepare a place for me come on clap your hands with us mm, he's gone away he's gone away to prepare
stop right there. Come on, put those hands together. I said, put those hands together. Can we give it up for Myron Butler and Levi, y'all? How many need the Lord's glory in this place today? And we are so excited. Do y'all realize Daniel had such an impact on music in every area from secular to spiritual to all over the world? Can we give God praise for the gift of Daniel Jones? His hand has been in so much 
and making an impact in so many. And so we're just grateful for that. Now we'll get to the part of the program uh, where we have remarks. Everybody say remarks. All right. So we worked out last night. Uh, Y'all were here last night. We said the family chose who they wanted to speak today. Somebody say amen. And so we also worked out last night that if you were sitting there and you say, you know, I wasn't going to say nothing, but I'm going to. No, you're not. The Lord didn't tell you that. Because the Lord already talked with us and the family. And the family told us what thus said the Lord. Can somebody put your hands together for what the family said? Somebody say amen. Now. That's what we're going to go by. So we're going to buy by. We're going to have a good time uh, with our encouraging remarks today. And we're going to remember we're going to lift up the name of Jesus with our remarks. We're going to lift up the life of Daniel. And we're going to encourage this family with our remarks today. Now, having done that, uh, we have uh, several people that are here that are going to be brought out by others. We have several people who Daniel uh, 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 toured with and played for and so those people are woven into uh, the groups that we have that are coming up and so we not forget about you uh, we're just following the program somebody say amen uh, this first group that's coming up uh, would be Asia C. Wright uh, Monica Martin and we still want to lift up Monica for our good brother Sean Martin can somebody say amen because they were definitely brothers as well. And then we have uh, my brother R.C. Williams. Where are you, R.C.? What you say? I know you got shades on somewhere. I, I told you, you got shades on. That's my boy right there, R.C. Williams. Uh, Oak Cliff Worldwide. See, we, we did Oak Cliff Worldwide because Daniel lived in DeSoto, but we had to come to Oak Cliff. Somebody say amen. I do want to thank God for my big brother, my pastor, Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes III, for allowing us to use his facility today. Can somebody give God praise for Dr. Haynes? I'm proud of him for his new appointment uh, over the Rainbow Push Coalition uh, coming after uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson. So listen, uh, Asia, y'all are church people. Y'all know how we do this. Let's roll, all right? God bless you. We'll come back right after that. Let's give them a hand, y'all. Let's get ready. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aisha Seawright, and Daniel Jones is one of the best friends I've had in my entire adult life. I was introduced to him by my husband, Spud, in 1998, when he joined our ever-rotating cast of band members who eventually became family. I affectionately labeled him as my little boo-boo. My mom always says that the best gift anyone can ever give you is to tell you how they really feel about you. And based on these last 17 days, I can say that he made all of us feel valued, seen, important, and loved. No matter the venue, from arenas and stadiums, churches or lounges, to front lawns and jam sessions and rehearsals in garages, Daniel was consistently professional and innovative. I remember watching him listen to and learn from his mentors. He was always a student and the teacher, simultaneously leading and learning. He was even the first person to tell me that what confided in him and said he was going to marry me. <laughs> Once we were in Italy to share the gospel through song, some of those of his favorite songs we just sang. And uh, the city was shutting down, but we were hungry. We approached a restaurant near our hotel and management told us we're closed for the evening. Look, I don't know what Daniel said, <laughs> but he said something to him. And that man opened his door to us and we all ate and laughed and labeled him the mayor of Milan. <laughs> Three has always been our favorite number. My birthday's on the third, I'm a mom's third child, blah, blah, blah. And his love of the number three echoed through his life. He even spoke in three word phrases. During our last text dialogue, he said a few significant things in groups of three. Where's Foot? Where's Robert? I'm proud of y'all. Look at him. All of you, you're amazing. We are here. Don't forget, let's lead by example. And I responded in threes also. You are a leader, you're a light, and I love you. In that conversation, he asked me to write something for him. And I had no idea that the last thing I would compose for my boo-boo would be an obituary and remarks. We are raising our boys to be best friends, great men, and most importantly, great humans. He never left Robert out of any activities, nor any kids, really, <laughs> out of any activities he was hosting, from renting out movie theaters and trips to the fair and epic waters, skating and sleepovers. Uncle Daniel's and Auntie Brisha's house became a place of refuge, not for just us, but anyone who Daniel called friend. When my dad passed away, he was one of the first people to let me cry. And then after three minutes, and I mean three minutes, he said, all right, that's enough. <laughs> Every conversation was a potential song title. 
He's simply a genius and a genuine friend. He may have been short physically, but he is and will forever be a giant in our hearts. I'm proud to be an honorary member of the Jones family. To Bree, Dylan, Zay, Val, his grandmother, siblings, Uncle Bobo, Aunt Stephanie, and the whole Jones family. Y'all are stuck with us for life. Wait a minute. For your life. Praise God, the blood still works. Still works, it still works. My name is Monica Martin, and I am standing in the gap for my husband, Carol LaShawn Martin. And and when I say standing, I'm like literally here because I don't, you know, this is just not my thing, but um, and you, you guys that know Sean know it's a huge gap to stand in. But he loves presentives. Daniel, that is his little brother. It is his, and will always be his little brother. I tried to write something down and be all profound and, and um, uh, enlightening and all that, but I was like, oh, well, how am I going to represent Sean, right, and stand in the gap for him? And you guys know he'd go from holy to hood. So... <laughs> I couldn't really balance all of that. So I just, <laughs> I come here to say that Daniel, you guys know when he shows up, it's always a party to get started. There will be a Daniel and Sean show up together. Exactly. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say. It can be a little scary at times, but you always know it's going to be magical when they show up together, you know. And... I woke up this morning with a praise in my heart, and I'll be honest, every morning is not like that. But I woke up this morning, and I was just praising God and thanking God and praising him. And Sean will be the first to tell everybody that I don't sing, I don't dance, I don't play an instrument, though I played a mean flute when I was like in this junior high school. <laughs> but it, over these past couple weeks, something kept dropping in my spirit, and they kept saying, the best is yet to come. And I'm like, what? The best, is yet, the best is yet to come. So I got in the car, I was driving out to where Sean is, and Donald Lawrence's song came on. The be this was just the other day, the best is yet to come. And a couple of the words just stood and said, hold on my brother, don't give up. Hold on my sister, just look up. There is a blessing that's in store for you when you make it through, God's going to really blow your mind. And it talked about the whole thing that because of everything that you've been through, that your blessings will double just for you. And I receive that right now in the name of Jesus. Bree, you have a village that runs deep. You have a bit deep and strong. And Sean and I are a part of that village. And we love you, and we will continue to hold you guys up. My son said this morning after we finished praying, I was telling Spud this earlier, he said after he fin we finished praying this morning, he said, Mommy, he's four, okay, broke, doesn't have a job. <laughs> but he told me this morning, he said, Mommy, tell Miss Bree that we should go all go to main event. Main event always makes me feel better. So I'm extending an open invitation from the brokest Martin <laughs> for a date to main event. I love you. I love you all. Thank you. All right. So I know some of y'all probably be wondering what Oak Cliff Worldwide is. But, um, my name is Robert Spussy, right? And, um, and uh, no. um, along with my brother here, I'm gonna name all of the guys, the members of this uh, group of guys, gentlemen that uh, Daniel actually named uh, in, a, in a text thread. And um, it's Jerome Harmon, um, R.C. Williams, um, Sean Martin, Bobby Sparks. Chris Gobby, and it was Daniel Jones. 
Um, we're all his brothers, and you know, hanging out with everybody this week, I found out that he wasn't just our little brother. And um, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to see how many lives he's touched. You know, I didn't know. You know, he's just dang from Dallas. You know, from Oak Cliff for for us. And um, I just want to say thank you to all the musicians around the world, because there's musicians around the world. I don't know if you guys have recognized. Taking the time out, coming here to pay respect and show honor to our brother. I really appreciate that. Um, and um, I just want to say the Jones family, y'all y'all know how much Daniel meant to me. Um, he was 15 years old, and I'm gonna make it short. He, uh, I went to Mama Jones' house, Mama Jones and Papa Jones, to pick up Daniel and to take him to rehearsal and I wanted to start mentoring him because he was, he was a phenomenon. Even at the age of 12 and 13, he was playing with adults and playing rings around some of us. Um, and I went and I, I realized I didn't really use the proper protocol. I just was gonna go pick up a, you know, me and Daniel already had established a relationship. So, but I was actually 23. Um, I was a grown man and I was going to pick up a, a 15 year old. And Miss, Miss, you know it's coming. Miss, <laughs> Miss Jones, we walked in the house and you know, I was going to go back to the room and help him pick his keyboard up and t put it in the car. And she said, hold on young man. So she set me down in the living room and she stood over me. Do you remember this mom? She said, what is a grown man doing hanging out with a 15 year old? <laughs> and, uh, and and you know, there was a great checking that happened. Um, and I had to, it was a trial. It was a whole trial. And I had to tell, I had to tell her, I'm not, I'm not here to hang out. I just want to be, I just want to mentor him. He's one of the most talented kids I've ever met, you know, at that time. And um, from that point, we took him out on the road as a 16 year old with God's property all over the world. And he became, he was the mascot then, but he also became the uh, co-MD and was my partner in crime forever from then on to now. And um, I just want to say thank you to you guys for letting us bar him for the, the moments that we've had. I know it, it was a sacrifice for you guys, but just know that he has touched the world in ways that we can't even see. And um, I'm going to miss him. I love you, Bree, Zadrian. Dylan, you know you got uncles all over the place. Whatever you need, we always here for you. And we love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, my name is uh, R.C. Williams. <laughs> um, I, I told myself I'm going to it, hold it together. Dan Jones, um, it's only one Dan Jones, and it's hard, it's hard to lose a brother. Um, I've been trying to keep it, keep it together. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, um, I mean, Daniel was a rose, y'all. He he shined all over the world. Everywhere we went, you know, they they know Daniel Jones. He would light up the room. Um, he had a vision for all of us to um, start this production around uh, Oak Cliff Worldwide, and he would text me he'd be like, "Man, we got to get the brothers together. Man, we need to start this machine and and uh, you know, get these artists and." start a school and um, mentor the, young, the younger musicians. And, and that, that was Daniel, he mentored everybody. You know, he passed the torch, you know. He, he, I mean, I love, I love you, Daniel, and um, I, I love you, Brisha, and everybody. And I, you know, I'm gonna miss Daniel, I'm gonna really miss Daniel. And uh, I mean, 
Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm sitting here perplexed because how did he have time to affect so many people's lives in a way that I thought we were his only, I thought, he, I was his, <laughs> I thought we were his only family because he was, I mean, goodness gracious, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Um, my name is Coco. Um, I need for all the members of Badu World, the Badu World family, please come and stand in solidarity with us for Daniel. Daniel um, ended his career with Badu World and uh, we love him and we appreciate him. At this time, everybody in Badu World, please come up. At this time, I'm gonna pass the mic to uh, Erica Badu, someone who Daniel played with and well, they were friends. I used to like listen to them laugh and giggle on the phone all the time and they were so creative, such a creative team. You guys, I wanna, do you want to? Erica, come on. Thank you. Peace and love, how y'all feel? I'll keep short. I mean, this is my family right here, and a lot of other people in the audience who uh, we've made music with and made conversation with and created dialogues with through music. Uh, Daniel's love runs all through that. And I had an opportunity to sit with his mother and Mrs. Jones um, on the, in the moment that they decided to release him. Back to creation. Into energy. They say that there are two deaths on this plane. The first death is the one when the heart stops and the brain stops and the spirit leaves the body. The second death is the last time someone says your name. We will never stop saying your name. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this very, very special ceremony. Peace, thank you. Come on, one more time, y'all. Can we put our hands together for all those wonderful Remarks that we've had, listen, it kind of gets heavy at times. That's what funerals do. I want everybody to stand just for about five seconds for me. Everybody stand. All right. Just inhale. One good time. Inhale. Now, don't exhale if you didn't brush your teeth. Don't let it sit. All right. Go ahead. Exhale. Now, I want you to go ahead and greet about three or four people around you. Say, you doing all right? You doing all right? Good to see you. Good to see you. We riding this together. We got a little bit more to go. We're going to be out of there. All right, you need to get a little hug, give a little hug, do what you need to do right now. We're going to make it through this. Now put your hands together and give God some praise right there. All right, you can be seated right now in the presence of the Lord. Listen, at this time, uh, what we're about to do, we have a presentation, a video presentation. Listen, you have your obituary. Uh, it says read silently. You can read that while we're doing this so we can work both of those. We can do that simultaneously, and that will be a blessing at this time. Uh, right after that, we'll come back and uh, we'll give directives on our next set of remarks, and then we're going to get ready to have a word from the Lord. Can somebody say amen? All right, our uh, video uh, team, are we ready, Snoop? Snoop the man? All right, let's go. always blessed to have mentors 
and I think that's a lot of things that we're missing right now. So when I'm home, time ago, God blessed us with a young lady who grew up, he grew up into a woman to become a great mother, a great wife to my son. I can say right now, it's truly a gift from my Heavenly Father that she 
bless that he bless her here with us with her presence This is Robert Glasper. Sorry I'm traveling. Um, I wish I could be there. Daniel is my brother. I can't even believe I'm making this video. But um, with the college with Daniel, you know, and he's one of those guys in the room. When he walks in the room, the room lights up. You know, I used to joke with him all the time. Like, bro, you four feet tall. But when you play, you 19 feet tall. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to miss him so much. And I know y'all are too. Much love. There will never be another guy like Daniel Jones. Come on, one more time. Let's give a hand for Daniel. Wonderful tribute uh, to his life in that moment. Listen, we're getting to the latter part of the program. Uh, we have another section of, of remarks, and these remarks are coming from the family. And uh, here's what I want our family to do at this moment. I want you to do your remarks as you've planned your remarks. I do want you to consider uh, that we have a preacher that's coming up. Somebody say amen. And we want to make sure we encourage and, and leave space for that. We want your heartfelt remarks because this is the family who's walked with him through all these years. So I'm going to ask, uh, we have the names that are written here, Dennis J. Dabney, L.D. Dabney. However, you've grouped yourselves to come together. I'm going to ask that you move at this moment uh, so we can have a, a good transition on our time. So those who are on the printed program, uh, if you are coming to give remarks, I'm going to ask that you stand at this time. Join us right here at the uh, microphone. So I see uh, Brother DJ, uh, Deacon LD, and uh, Roy Lee, are we speaking today? And then uh, uh, Lena Louise Jones and, and uh, Valerie. And then we'll have... Brisha, we won't make the boys stand long. So you, I'll just call them up when y'all ready. So y'all want to stand as long. And so if y'all go ahead, can we give this wonderful, strong family a hand, y'all? Let's, let's give them a hand of encouragement. And we want them to give their tributes, give them and uh, lift up at this moment. And then we'll come back and set our time for our latter part of our program. God bless you. Good evening, you all. Good evening. Everybody doing all right today? Good, listen, um, I'm going to try to um, get through this portion of the um, service. Um, I send text messages. Um, in my communication, that's how I'll send it out. And I send it in a full phrase. It's a full statement. It's not necessarily I'm communicating with you. I'm telling you how I feel about you and what I see in you. Anybody who's gotten these texts from me know how they are. They're very direct. They are. And I'm sending this text to um, Daniel now, so you all bear with me. And the text says, um, nephew, I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. It says, you're a great man, great husband, father, son, brother, and friend. You lived your dreams. Your not being here will be tough, but you've left us with so many great moments and memories. Thank you for always being true to you. Thank you for allowing all of us to live through you. You shared every experience with us, the good, the bad, the crazy, and the unbelievable. The energy you brought to a room can't be replaced. Here's a moment of levity for all of you all who know Daniel. Um, that ugly singing voice. <laughs> to all you singers in here, y'all know that he thought, right. he thought he I said he thought 
that he could actually say, <laughs> that he can actually stand up and sing in front of people. He really believed that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna do this, y'all. I know y'all. Some of y'all gonna find this so inappropriate. But yesterday, yesterday I was thinking about this too. I was thinking about this. Um, I wanted to get. A, I have a crown in my house, a crown that they gave me for Father Day. Be honest. I wanted to get the crown and walk down the aisle and do this. Oh, because that's what Daniel would. Y'all looking at me like he wouldn't have done that. He would have done, he, you know, he would have given us all of this. The Lord. What is this? Yeah, I'm talking about you, boy. Yeah, I'm talking about it. Um, uh, the Prince imitations. Lord, the Prince imitations. Listen, every time This Is It by Michael Jackson used to come on, Daniel would call me every time it came on to tell me that it was on. I said, you know, we've only watched that 100 times. 100 times. We watched it 100 times. Um, I'm going to move past Daniel and I'm going to get to Brisha. Brisha. Um, classy. Beautiful. Elegant. Contained. Controlled. Um, somebody had to be. Um, with Daniel. He needed somebody to control him at all times. Um, Brisha, um, thank you for giving him family, children, love, stability, swagger, that vibe. You know, that little thing y'all have, that little wink, the smile. Thank you for, thank you for riding with him. He needed it. He needed it. Thank you for riding with him. Um, thank you for holding him down. Thank you for always tolerating all of us. Brisha, uh, one, one more time. Brisha, thank you for always tolerating all of us. That would be all you people that came out to his house and ate up all his food. Y'all looking at me like I was the only person there. God, dog. Uh, Listen, um, Brisha, you are amazing. You did it. Um, my pistol packing West Dallas chick. Everybody need. Fellas, y'all better try to get you a ride or die chick. Daniel had one. He had a ride or die chick. Um, boys, to the boys. I love you both. Um, push, stand, work, go get it. Let's go. I mean, what am I supposed to say to some dudes? Uh, I love y'all. Y'all gonna be okay? Push, stand, go get it. Let's go. I got you. Val, thank you for giving, um, Val and Chris, thank you for giving Daniel life and purpose. Miss Louise, Rolly Jones Sr., Red, thank you for giving him an unshakable foundation. Rolly Jones, Jr., Uncle Jr., thanks for being his rock, for shaping, pushing, slapping, cussing, fighting, <laughs> guiding, instructing. Um, thank you. Thank you for being a brother. Um, and to all of you. Thank you for loving Daniel. Thank you. I don't think I've ever spoken after my son. Uh, seems like I should have come first. Uh, okay. I, I came today to say a few words about Daniel because Daniel, I was his uncle. So Daniel always came to me when he needed to tell, ask for a little advice. So on Pastor King's 16th anniversary, we were having a little program, and we're going to say what we're going to do for that anniversary. While I'm in that meeting, Daniel calls me out. And he says, 
Unc, I need to ask you something. I need to tell you something. I said, go ahead and tell me something. What you got to tell me? He said, uh, I have decided that I'm going to go all the way with Brescia. She's going to be my wife. I said, what? You talking about fine Brescia, the good looking girl up there? <laughs> what you talking about? That boy, that woman ain't finna marry you. Boy. Yeah, wait. So I'm going to tell you what I want you to do, son. I want you to leave right this minute. Go home, take a shower, brush your teeth, get you a rug and lay it down in front of your bed. Bend down and start praying. I said, I got a song for you. I want you to pray this song. He said, Uncle, is it a Christian song? I said, yeah. He said, I probably already know how to play it. I said, boy, I didn't say play it. I said, pray it. He said, okay, but what's the song, Uncle? I said, I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. And it ends with, the sky is the limit to what I can have. Now, let me tell you something. It worked. <laughs> Touchdown. It worked. And for all you non-Christians out there, he just proved to you prayer works. <laughs> so, Brescia, Vale, family. Don't worry, about, don't worry about Daniel. Daniel's up in heaven teaching uh, David how to play the harp <laughs> trying, to play the trying to teach him anyway because David ain't doing something right I know that okay. but I want this family to know that when the chicken has been eaten and the cake is gone you're going to need a friend I recommend Jesus there's an old Christian Baptist hymn and it says what a friend we have in Jesus all our pains and griefs to bear. Yeah. Oh, what it is a privilege to take everything, Brisha, everything, that to God in prayer. Yeah. Thank you. This is my father surviving sibling, my uncle. I want him to say something before I say anything. My mom's not going to speak, so I want him to say something uh, before I speak, if that's okay with y'all. Uncle Mike, Mike Jones, the original Mike Jones. Hey, I'm, uh, I, uh, I saw my name on the program, and um, I'm not a good speaker. So I decided I would give my time up. But I wasn't going to give it to nobody because everybody want to go a little extra. Amen. But I'd rather hear what the Lord want us to hear today since he had a message for all of us to be here at the same time. I, I don't have nothing to say. I will let my action speak for me. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lot of people that promise a lot of things. But if it's something that the family really need, we'll see you step up to the plate. Because I'll be around looking. <laughs> this boy broke a lot of people's heart. And we'll never get over it. A sea of black in this room. So pray for the family. Come on, Junior, and say what you got to say. <clears throat> First, giving on to God who is in control of everything. 
ever since July the 19th, well. Life ain't been the same, but, but, but. Um, I have 10, 11, 12 other nephews to uh, mentor right now. I did my best with him and he flew away. He flew, <laughs> he flew away. Uh, and that's the best gift he could have ever given me. Brisha, I, I, I love you. The boys, Valerie, everybody. Uh, we, don't, we say it, but I hope that action comes with that love, that word love. Uh, this is my daughter, she's gonna read quickly what my thoughts are and then I'm, I'm gonna say one more thing and I'm getting out of here. Can you read some of this? Cause I can't. <clears throat> All right, it says, that video just broke me down again. But ever since July 19th, I have been speechless and numb and unable to express my feelings. So pray for my strength. But first of all, I just want to thank my sister Val for giving me my first nephew, who was more like a son to me that I never had. Next, I would like to thank my mother and father in heaven for our humble beginnings because my parents taught all of us about Jesus Christ and how much God loves us all. Now, for those of you who remember when Daniel was younger, when you saw me, you saw Daniel because we were stuck together like glue. But as we grew up and matured, we both had to walk and travel our own journeys that God blessed us with. And I'm thankful to God for allowing my nephew to be able to travel all over the world to play music for the world to enjoy. To all my blood nephews, please stand up at this time. Daniel set the standard and paved the way for all of y'all. So please make him proud. Brisha. Brisha, Dylan, and Zadrian, Uncle Junior will forever look after you. Daniel, Uncle Junior will always love you and cherish every memory that we had. Thank you. Um, and y'all know, Thank you, wife, for Chandrell just putting up with me because she's probably tired of me crying. And I see a grown man cry probably is kind of unusual, but she kept me out of jail, so I appreciate that in Vegas. <laughs> but y'all know Daniel believed in three life. Whatever, however, Samuel 3, three life, whatever it's supposed to be. I know it's one for the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So I'm, I'm going to leave y'all with that because I know a preacher preached one time about three gates in the east, three gates in the west, Three gates in the north, three gates in the south. I believe Daniel ran through all those gates. <laughs> Try to figure out which one he want to go through. He want to go through one of those gates. There's three gates in the east, right? Right, E.T.? Three gates in the west. We, they sang a song about it. But I know, I think Daniel was a little special, and y'all might not like this, preachers. There's a 13th gate with a one and a three. I want this one guy to come through this 13th gate. And that was Daniel. Then he shut it closed. He's making great music now. He made good music down here, but now he's making great music. Uh, I had a song I was going to sing or play, but I'm not going to do that right now. But I'm just going to say, maybe I'll see you soon. I long to see your face. Get your house in order. So you'll be ready when Jesus comes. Come on, y'all. Let's give God praise for those strong remarks. Now, here's what I want us to do at this time, because... Uh, Daniel, if you talk with Daniel, and, and even going back when he began talking about three life, that was years ago. Uh, he was reading the Bible. He was talking to me and asking me about three life. And so he journeyed to the book of Samuel chapter three. And I want you to read that when you get a chance. Just talking about hearing the voice of God. But he also liked threes because he's dealing with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We won't get into all that, but I want you to read Samuel chapter 3, all right? And it's about someone being called. I want us to do this at this moment because Daniel loved his family. And he especially loved Brescia. He loved these sons that he had. One thing I'm also grateful for, he loved Zadrian. And then there's one that I'm so grateful Daniel had because when I look at him, I see Daniel all over again. And so we're so grateful. Can we stand right now and encourage these young brothers who are about to come and speak on behalf of their family and their daddy? Can we give them a hand right now? This wonderful family and his wife.
You can be seated. Hey, how y'all doing? Um, I'm not that much of a speaker. Um, so along with my brother and my mom, kind of Jamal, AD, Chanel, y'all come up real quick. You know, these are, uh, they my cousins, but every time I come back home from my home station, uh, we always kicking it. So that's, they basically like my sister and my two little brothers. So I always confide in them, you know what I'm saying? I trust in them. Um, when I had, uh, when I had heard what happened, um, I dang near fell out. Um, <laughs> my legs had gave out. I was at work too. Um, so that's a, that's a bad look. Um, but when I heard what happened, I was just in shock. Like I, and even to this moment, I can't even, can't even grasp, grasp it real quick right now. Um, I know some of y'all probably wonder why I'm wearing this right now. Um, yes, I'm in the military, but I wanted to wear this today to show him that I did it, you know? I wanted to show him that, you know, all the lessons that he taught me, all the experiences that he passed on to me, and he ex experienced a lot. And I know um, a lot of y'all in here, he was a, ment a mentor for y'all, but I count myself lucky because, you know what I'm saying, he, I seen him every day. Like, that was my dad. You know, like, at first when I was, when I was younger, I wasn't a very, outspoken kid. Um, I wasn't very talkative, very shy. Um, I really just didn't, I just didn't speak. I wasn't open about how, like, how I was feeling. And with my dad, he was very, very patient, you know. And I thank him for that to this day because now I feel like I can open up about anything. Like I feel like I can be appreciative for who I am. I can, you know, and just be myself, you know? And he, the one thing he taught me was to always embrace who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't try to f go with what everybody else is doing. You know what I'm saying? Just be, be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, Every time, a lot of times when we, when we would have our conversations, like I remember this, I remember these days, a lot of times when we have our conversation, he would always have to step on the, on the steps. <laughs> Cause he ain't like, he ain't like to, he ain't like to look up to me. I was like, I feel that. He didn't like, he ain't like to look up to me. So I was like, you know, I, I, I got you. But every time, <laughs> every time he would talk to me, I would know I was getting some, some type of knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Some type of experience, some life lesson. And um, yeah, like now I just, I just can't believe it. I like guess uh, I want to say thank you to my family, G Mama, G Daddy, especially for raising him to be who he is, to be who he was, because he passed all that down to me and Dylan and everybody, basically almost everybody in here. Um, one thing he taught me that I still like carry to this day is that respect, respect can get you, get you places. Saying yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir, like all that. Like you never know, like you never know who you around, you know what I'm saying? So just being respectful, being honorable to people that you, you know what I'm saying, you may encounter in life, like just always be that way. And um, I just want to thank you G Mama G Daddy, I just want to thank all y'all, Jones family, you know what I'm saying, for embracing me and accepting me as like I was already there, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
Jamal, AD, Chanel, the Hicks brothers, all y'all. Yeah, yeah, y'all my cousins, but I, I think of y'all as my, my brothers. You know what I'm saying? They always take, y'all always text me, see how I'm doing. Like, I might, I might be working, but y'all always text me, see how I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just appreciate y'all. And I appreciate everybody that's uh, been hitting me, hitting me and the, my family up, you know, supporting, showing y'all, showing y'all love. Like, I appreciate all that. Uh, I love y'all, and thank you for, for showing y'all support today. Um, My brother from the say song. Uh, hello everybody. Uh, if y'all don't, <laughs> don't know me, uh, um, Daniel song. You know, you know. Uh, let me tell you about my dad. Uh, he was just amazing, energetic, and everything. The one thing I I loved but hated was the laugh. It just always got me. I don't know why. It always got me to laugh, even when he says jokes, it wasn't funny. It's just the laugh that always made it funny. You know, I love everything about him. You know, him and my mom's relationship, his relationship with his cousins, and one of my, actually, and his brothers too, one of my favorite memories is with me, Zadrian, and well, we made it for mom. It's when it was Mother's Day, and we made a song for her. That's the one thing I really love about it, that it was just so great. And I don't know what to do right now, but I know all y'all gonna help me through this moment and just everything. That's why I wanna thank y'all. I thank y'all for that, honestly. Blood or not, y'all are still here for me. Uh, my homeboy Gavin, I don't know where he at in the crowd. I love to thank you too. Thank you too. Malachi, all y'all here. I, I love y'all too. Jamal, Chanel, Adarian, you know, y'all my family. Bryson, I ain't forget about you. <laughs> I just, I love y'all, man. So let's just get through this moment and do everything together. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bree. Let me give y'all my government name, how to, <laughs> how to pronounce it, T-Aisha. Tisha Brichet Jones. Okay, um, I had to write down my thoughts because I knew once I got up here, everything would just go. So, this is what I wrote for my love. Oof. Thank you for showing me what unconditional love really is. They say opposites attract, and you were definitely the yin to my yang. I can never forget how big your heart is for the people you love and hold dear to you. I can never forget the generosity and compassion you showed towards your friends and those who even played the smallest role in your life. I will always remember the loving father you are to our boys, how they look up to you, and how they hold on to every word of affirmation you spoke into their lives on a daily basis. We never let a day go by without telling each other, I love you, every time we spoke, whether you were home or away. You shared your gift and your love of music with the entire world. You taught so many, you mentored so many, you learned from some of the greatest at home and all around. There will never be another with your loud, boisterous voice, laugh, and energy. Every room you stepped in lit up because you were there. When God created the earth, he gave everyone and everything an assignment. You always told me that I was your assignment from God and that you were mine. Now your assignment is complete. You get an A plus. Job well done. You get to skip ahead and be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your beloved grandfather and my mother. There will never be another Daniel Lee Stephen Jones. A part of my soul will always be empty. And I will love you endlessly. <laughs> Thank you.
Y'all can clap better than that. It took strength just to even get out that seat. Come on, let's stand. We, we got a second to stand for courage like that. If she can get out of her seat, we can get up out of ours and appreciate her for giving us encouragement. You can be seated. Now we're at the latter part of our program. Uh, all this has been great. Uh, we know at this particular point, all this has been about lifting the life of Daniel and lifting up Jesus and encouraging his family. We're going to continue that at this particular point. Right now, if the Hicks brothers would make their way to the stage. Come on, can we give God praise for them? And as they're coming, uh, we're getting ready to hear a word from the Lord. Somebody say amen. Because when we leave here today, Daniel already is with the Lord. Can somebody give God praise for that? So now, we're about to hear a word for those who remain on this earth. Because we now have to walk with the Lord. And so we want to make sure uh, that we introduce our pastor for today. Uh, our, our pastor for today, thank you for bringing that up. The pastor for today is Pastor Dwayne Hicks, Sr. of the Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church. And so this is a wonderful family pastor. We're so, a great, so grateful for his word today. Somebody open your mouth and say, preach, Pastor Hicks. Right after the Hicks brothers sing, we're going to be blessed with the word of God. Let me see how you're going to help the preacher today. Are you going to help the preacher? Put your hands together. Help the Hicks brothers and the preacher. God bless you.
this very hour. God, thank you for just being you. What we need right now is the power of your word. So God, I just ask that you would speak even now. Then Lord, would you speak so clearly that we would leave this place rejoicing in your name. Thank you for the life of Daniel. Help us now. do from henceforth might bring glory to you. Humble your servant even now. Then Lord use me until you're satisfied. Now may the words of my mouth the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight for Lord you are my strength and my redeemer amen amen thank God will you do me one more favor and just give God a great hand of praise grateful, so thankful for who God is, certainly for all that he has done. Now, I'm not sure if this is um, literally confession time, but um, I've got to confess something. Uh, when I was uh, told that uh, Risha wanted me to do the eulogy, I was nervous. I got real nervous because somebody told me that Penny was going to be here. Y'all know her as Janet Jackson, but I know her as Penny. We've been in love for a long time. My wife is here. And uh, y'all check her purse. Don't let her raise her purse. My, my heart is heavy, but my soul is happy because what everybody enjoyed about Daniel, his playing, his encouragement, I just enjoyed his life. He was just my nephew. I don't care if he played a note. He was my nephew. And I just loved him for who he was. I don't want to hold you. I don't want to hold you long. Um, but I waited on all y'all, so. Psalm 90. Thank you, Pastor King. Thank you so much. Um, y'all need to pay him because y'all worked him to death. Pay him something. Not Brisha, all y'all that was talking. Y'all need to pay him. Psalm 90, verse number 9. It says, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Just, just, just for, for a few moments, I want to talk about life. Do you mind if I use my imagination today? You, you may be seated. That's it, just life. This, this 90th, Psalm is literally a prayer, and in it is a serious cry. It's a search for significance in life. 
Moses wrote this, and he declares it from the beginning, God has always been, and we as his creation are subject to him. And so Moses is inwardly inquisitive about the purpose of life. My brothers and sisters, family, in our modern society, too much of our life is spent at a frantic pace. The endless driving to keep up with the many demands placed upon us in this thing called life. In the midst of the hustle and the bustle of life, we occasionally lift our heads and pause momentarily to wonder what we're really striving for in life. To, to see if there's a lasting purpose in what we do, what it is, or are we just caught in an endless wheel turning without making any real progress. In life, we glance and seek information from self-help gurus hoping to find that our worth and our meaning will be found soon. But, but here's what's crazy. Once we finally capture the elusive prize of wealth and fame and public importance or some sort of similar significance, if we're not satisfied with it, then we're off to the races again. We're seeking further to find significance or my place in life. And that's what Moses wanted to know. And in this psalm, Moses describes this conundrum of human life, and then he gives a word of hope to the existence and purpose of mankind. Can I challenge you to read Psalms 90 when you leave from here today? With all that being said, I have a question today. What is life? What is, what is life really worth? Does life matter? And if it does, what color life? really matters? What, what kind of life? How do we really define life? How are we supposed to treat life? How do we really spend our life? What does life really boil down to? Am I supposed to love it, loathe it, or just live it? Or am I meandering through life harshly trying to lose it? That, that's, just, that's just a question about life. It's been said so many times today that Daniel called it three life. Because his life consisted of threes. He lived years, but those of us that are left here with life, the question is, what is life? The text says we spend our life, our years, as a tale that is told. Do you mind if I ask you another question? What is your life saying? Because if it's a tale told, what is your life saying? What type of tale is your life telling? I, I didn't ask you what are others saying about your life. I ask, what is your life saying? The truth is, only you and the one that gave your life really knows. Now, I, I'm not talking about your Facebook life. Not, not that one. Not your Instagram fabulous life. Not that one. What is your life without the filters? I'm not talking about life that you portray in the presence of people you don't know and some you really don't care to know, but what is your life really saying? Because many of us paint a public smile, then go home and hide in our loneliness. We go and hide in our despair and in our depression, and we wake up to a whole nother day to be socially superb. But what is your life really saying? I would, I would today ask you to pull out your driver's license and share with your neighbor what it says, but when it comes to that part where it says height and weight, you wouldn't be honest. You'll cover that part up 
so nobody would really be able to, to tell. So it lets me know you really wouldn't be truthful there either. Family, my initial question was, what is life? And all of us would come up with so many different clever ways to define what we believe or what we think life really is. Well, my brothers and sisters, rather you believe it or not, life is nothing without the giver of life being in the midst of your life. Because many of us are wasting life. Some of us are striving to get somebody else's life. But God gave you life, and the one he gave you, I need to tell you to enjoy it in such a way that your life shows appreciation to the one that blessed you with it. And I really pray this today. I pray you're not living your best life now. Because if you're living your best life now, you're going to miss the one that's coming. Because the very one that gave us life gave us this also. Eye has never seen. Ear has never heard. Nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love. I love it. I love English. Mama used to make me sit in the closet and read because she didn't want me to be dumb. And so when you look at words, they mean something. And that phrase, has prepared, means it's waiting. I can't have it right now, but in due time. I'll be able to lay hold on what God has prepared for me. Listen, listen to what I said, what he's prepared. And that lets us know that it's not for this life, but for the one to come. And the truth is, it's not for everybody. It's only for those who love God. Only for those that have a relationship with them. Please understand what I'm saying. I said those who have a relationship, God's not excited about you having a fling with him. He wants you to have a relationship with him. Prayerfully, before we leave here today, if you don't have a relationship, you can get one before you leave. I pray you don't get tired of me asking questions. But I want to ask you something else. How much life do you have left? I, I really just want to put something on your mind. What do you need to straighten out before the end of life? Who do you need to forgive before life is over? What grudge do you need to let go of? Your silence is speaking loudly to me. Because a lot of us say we're living life, but you can't live it because you're focused on other stuff. I said, how much time do you have left on your life clock down here? Now, here's the truth. We, we all know your birthday. We know when your birthday is because you're posted everywhere and then you pin $37 with one of those big grandmama pins. <laughs> then you take two of them off to go buy you a Slurpee because it's hot, but you're hoping before you get back home somebody give you four more dollars so you can count it out when you get home. L listen, we know your, your birthday, but when is your final day down here? May, may, may I say to someone urgently, you don't have the rest of your life to get the rest of your life together. You got to do it right now. And check this out. What, what a shame, what a shame to know what you could have done, could have accomplished, who you could have spiritually influenced, who you could have won to Christ if only you lined your life up with God. Because we don't have a lot of time left. Can I prove it to you? Here's the proof. What your mouth says and what your knee is feeling is having a communication malfunction. 
they're, they're not really in agreement. That, that's why you got to talk to your knees and tell them, come on now, we're just going across the room. We got to get it together now. I, anybody here that used to just stand up real quick, but now you got to one, two, three, and rock it up? That, that lets me know that we really don't have a whole lot of time left. What your mind is thinking and what your back is responding to is on two different levels. Th those of old used to say it like this, time is winding up because your vision is dimmer, your strength is weaker, your breath is shorter, your hair is thinner, without the added pieces, your hair is thinner. It just lets me know we don't have a whole lot of time left. Will, will y'all be truthful with me today? How, how long do you have, how long do you have to talk to yourself and tell yourself, we finna get up now. I, 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 I need you to get with me. And you start talking to every part of your body to remind your body parts what they're supposed to do when you just used to spring up and just move about carelessly, but now you got to talk to it. It lets me know that our time is not as long as it once was. Ankles sounding like microwave popcorn bags. Orville Redenbacher, get that kind if you're going to pop it because all the kernels popping back bad. Is there anybody here right now willing to testify that you experience pain in some areas of your body now that you really ain't never paid attention to? My brothers and sisters, this allows us all to know that we don't have as much time left as we think. If Tina and Erica Campbell were here, they would tell you today, you got to get yourself together because we got some place to go. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 2 and 11, as I continued musing over all I had accomplished and the hard work it took, I concluded to all this, it was fleeting. Like trying to embrace the wind, is there any real gain by all the hard work under the sun? You got it, you live in it, you drive it, you wear it, but what's his real worth? I, I, I found something out, found something out, and this is going to trip you out, that the time that the Rolex watch tells, my Apple watch tells the same time. What is life really worth? We spend our lives like a tale that is told. And the real truth is all of us, we're really not as popular as we really think we are. Truth of this, we're all at a certain level of poor. You may not be as poor as you used to be, but all of us are on the same level. Because if you put your money beside Bernard Arnold's money, it'll show you you ain't really got no money. Check him out. He's the second richest person in this world. Uh, the truth is this. If you pay off all you owe, pay who you owe, credit card balances at all, we all stand on level ground, and we got to admit like Solomon, it's all vanity. James, the very brother of our Lord, said, life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Life as we know it, for all of us, is coming to an end. Life is vanishing away. Family, we don't have time uh, like we used to. Don't really know the place of our end. We don't know the very time that it's going to end. But the word of God lets us know we all have an appointment with death. An appointment that cannot be rescheduled, cannot be postponed, and you ain't going to be late. So, so knowing this, here's my initial question. What do we do with life? Well, family, there's only one thing you really can do with life. You got to live it. But how you live it makes a difference because many of us really want to hear God say well done but we ain't doing well how you live life makes a difference 
Well, Hicks, you've been talking 13 minutes. You ain't told me yet. Well, I'm about to tell you that if you're really going to live life the way that it should be lived, you've got to live life purposefully. Not haphazardly. Not accidentally. Not on or off the cuff. You don't live life in the wind, but you got to live it on purpose. And the purpose that we live, it has already been provided by God. All of us have had dreams, we've had plans, but when someone turned the channel with the master remote, some plans, some dreams had to change. And I believe it's important for me to let you know, you better learn how to live life down here that's adaptable. Because if not, when things change, uh, you got to shift. And if you don't know how to shift, you're going to be out the game called life. Child of God, you have to live life with purpose. Regardless of how things change, you got to be intentional about how you're living life. Listen, here's reality. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Will you tell your neighbor it ain't yours? We've heard it said so many times, only what you do for Christ will last. We got to live life on purpose regardless of what comes our way, the ups and the downs, the turns and the twists. Whatever it may be is going to work together for your good. And, and, and maybe it wasn't part of your plan. But the one that gave you life knew that your plan was very selfish. And so he allowed some things in your life to change. And whatever changes, it still works for your good. Here's why. Because it's God's purpose in your life. Only what you do for Christ will last. And my brothers and sisters, that's a truth that's going to follow us every day of our life. And since we know this, you got to watch what you do. I said, you got, is the mic still on? I said, you got to watch what you do. You got to watch the way you do it. You got to watch how you do it. You got to watch who you do it with. I'm talking about life. Because here's something that we all need to know. Somebody is watching you do life. Some folk would tell you to live life to the fullest, but some of us get too full of life and forget what life is all about. Life ain't cars and bricks and mortar and addresses and neighborhoods and styles and name brands and colors and kinds. You, you ever see anybody with all of this and still miserable? Folk that got everything but ain't got no peace. You ever see anybody that's gotten more than they can handle, more than they can ever lose, but still dissatisfied with life? It's simply because life is found in Christ Jesus alone. Because after all of this down here is all over with, what you going to do with what's left? You got to live life purposefully. And I need to tell somebody in here, God did not design you to be rich. I know it hurts, but that feels so good. He designed you to live on purpose. He did not design you to be liked by everybody. He designed you to live on purpose. God designed you to live so close to him so that through your life, somebody else might come to him. The purpose of your life is to reflect the light of his son. That's why we got to be careful how we handle life. Can I say this and not hurt your feelings one more time? We're really not as important as we build ourselves up to be. Where your address is doesn't make life easier. It's all a conglomeration of what the three little pigs had individually, whoop, brick, and straw. What you ride in doesn't make your life easier. Because sooner or later, it's got to go see the manufacturer for repairs. I don't care if it's a Kia, Corolla, or Cadillac, it's got to go get repaired. What you wear does not make life easier, whether it's Nike or Shaq specials that are on sale right now for back to schoolers. You got to live life with purpose and on purpose. And I want to tell you, don't allow your life to be a reason why someone else has no desire for Jesus Christ. Tell somebody you got to live purposefully. 
But you also got to live life prayerfully. Saints, you have to live life prayerfully. Not with your fingers crossed and your toes crossed and a rabbit's foot in your pocket. No, no. If you're going to make any sense of life, you got to live this life through prayer. Because it's a lot going on. Anybody remember, anybody remember the kind of love you had during COVID? You, you just miss folk. You loved everybody. Nobody had to ask you to pray then. You were just a prayer warrior then. Because it looked like everybody you knew and folk you didn't know were just checking out on life. L listen, but this invisible, horrific, life-taking virus made a whole lot of us pray necessarily. And it made you real nice. Isn't it something that we pray better when we're in trouble? We pray longer when inconvenience is in our lap. Trouble makes us pray. A few years ago, you, you were, talking about during COVID, you were so nice. You didn't even like flowers. But you couldn't go nowhere. Wasn't no store. You couldn't go nowhere. You were just in the front yard rubbing on dandelion petals and praying. Because you didn't want to... <laughs> You didn't want the Lord to come and get you. You, you, you became a prayer warrior. L listen, you, you would tell him, Lord, this is your servant. I want to thank you for just one more day's journey. Whatever. You ain't never prayed like that. Listen, the reality is we must live this life prayerfully, not just because of trouble, but often because prayer makes trouble tolerable. You got to have a prayer life. You can't have Jesus and good luck. Tell your neighbor, that's too much. You, you can't have both of them because you'll mess around and hit two power balls and then tell the preacher, I'm going to pay my tithes after you get through spending all your money. You can't have fortune cookie religion. You got to have a prayer life. Well, Paul says it like this. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request, that's prayer, be made known unto God. That's how you overcome dark days. This is how you deal with death of a loved one. This is how you handle the rough seas of life. Prayer is how you get through difficult days because you got to pray. Paul says it. You got to pray without ceasing. L listen, when Paul and Silas were in prison for doing the right thing, when they were locked up for being obedient to God, they didn't have time to write no letters. They didn't call Jim Adler the hammer to come and bail them out. They began to sing praises and they prayed to God and the result was God came through. When life is unfair, and it will be, when life turns in the other direction, child of God, you got to go to God in prayer. Songwriter says, oh, what needless pains we bear. Why? All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Our foreparents told us the truth. He may not show up when you want him to, but I'll tell you tonight, today, that the Lord always shows up on time. And if he doesn't show up quick enough, don't worry, pray again. And if he doesn't show up after you get through praying, then uh, pray one more time. I promise you, you can't get on the Lord's nerves. He ain't got no nerves. He's a spirit. And if he don't move fast enough, don't get discouraged. Just pray some more. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 8 says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Saints, this life is hectic and harassing. This life down here is tedious and torturous. Life at no warning will throw you a curveball. Before you lose it all, you got to pray. When you wake up in the morning, pray. When you're driving down 35 and 45 and 
635 and 75, when you're on George Bush Turnpike, when you're on Ledbetter and in South Dallas on Malcolm X, you got to pray. Before you cuss folks slap out, you better pray. You got to remain prayerful. If you got a relationship with Christ, you ought to be praying. On the job, you praying. At home, you praying. When you're getting mad, you praying. In the marketplace, you praying. Listen, if life is going to make any sense, you got to live life prayerfully. My question was, what is life? And if you're going to live it, you got to live it purposefully. You got to live life prayerfully. And then lastly, you got to live life patiently. Daniel lived his. But what is your life saying? If, if you're always in a rush in life, you'll come to find out the faster you go, the more time you waste. Job said it. All of my appointed time, will I wait until my change come? It got hot right quick. My, my brothers, sisters, sometimes we just want life to hurry up and do what we want life to do. But you got to live life patiently. I know we live in a microwave society where everything is faster, where everything finishes quicker, but life doesn't hurry up for anybody because it still takes nine months for an embryo to mature, to an infant to break forth out of its mother's womb. You can't hurry life. It still takes 365 days to turn another year old. You can't hurry life. You, you got to live life patiently. It, it still takes 24 hours for a day to be called full. You, you got to live life patiently. You, you still got to start at pre-K and matriculate through the 12th grade to graduate with a high school degree. You, you can't plant a seed and harvest the seed and eat the crop all in one day. You, you got to be patient enough and wait on the process to finish. And I, I, know, you, I know you feel uh, like life just needs to cooperate with what I entered into my life plan machine and just work out for me. Because many of you said, I'll be married by the age of 21, but you're still waiting. You said you'll have your own business by the age of 25, but you're still waiting on the law. And child of God, you got to learn how to live life patiently. Because sometimes life will turn you in a different direction. Life will hand you a different medicine bottle. Life will make you wait until time says uh, that it's ready now. And I thought about uh, life over here. All of its disappointments, all the do-overs, how it causes us to moan at times. But then uh, I thought about life uh, over there. I I'm talking about life uh, on uh, the other side. And when I thought about it, uh, the sun uh, doesn't have a job over there because the sun uh, lights the entire city. And when I thought about life over there, I ain't never been there. But what I heard about it uh, just excited my soul because I thought about uh, church over here, but then I thought about church over there. And I asked you, could I use my imagination? And as I stood there imagining, I gazed for a minute and I started seeing something different over there. 
Because as I was looking, I saw Roy Jones bowing in devotion, saying to the Lord, Oh Lord, our God, in the ages past, our shelter from a stormy blast. I see Eugene Hicks grabbing the microphone and singing in whatever key he desired. I see Grandmama Jones rocking with tears in her eyes. I hear Mary Helen making announcements but not being able to finish because what she talked about, she sees and can't stop shouting about who he really is. I see Annie Jernigan. I see Sister Shirley Cooper waving their hands in worship in agreement to how good he really is. I see Aunt Dolores in the corner having Baptist shout all by herself. Then there's a high pitch holler over in the corner of heaven from two sisters. It just so happened to be my mama and sister Vera Lee Richmond. And then there's a host of people that we know that are shouting and praising God. But I see something else. I hear something different. It's almost familiar, but it's too flawless to be real. I hear music from the grandstand. And I see Daniel with his fingers moving and his head racking, making melodic sounds. Every note is perfect because he's playing in the key of J. What is he talking about? He doesn't know music because there's no J on the keys. I'm so glad you caught it because he's no longer trying to play for us. He's playing in the key of J because the preacher of all preachers uh, stands up uh, and I hear him saying come on to me uh, all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest uh, I hear Daniel tuning up uh, as an invitation is given uh, to a real life uh, and my brothers and sisters uh, I just want to tell you uh, that this ain't really life uh, because they there's another life that's soon to come. Well, how you know, Hicks? Because I heard him say, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And when I come again, I'll receive you under myself and yonder hill. Out on a hill called Calvary, yonder he is hanging on an old rugged cross. She sang it before we started. He died for you and I. He gave up his life so that you and I could live. And my brothers and sisters, I'm glad he died. He died out on the hill, but that that ain't all he did. They took him down and they buried him in the heart of the earth. And he lay there all night Friday night. I'm so Oak Cliff Baptist. He lay there all day Saturday. And he lay there all night Saturday night. But here's where your life comes. Brighter Ooh, early Sunday morning, new life began. And one of these old days, in the sweet by and by, soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Good night, Daniel. It ain't goodbye. Good night, Daniel. We'll see you bright early in the morning. And when this life is all over, I just want to tell you, thank you, Lord. You've been a good. Is there anybody here that can testify that the Lord's been a good?
Ain't he been a good? Wish I had somebody in here that would testify to the truth that the Lord is good. He, he's so good. Not only is the Lord good, but I know for myself that the man is all right. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? If you know he is, shout he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, somebody give God praise for that word. I say y'all can do better than that. Give God praise for that word from the Lord. How many needed that word about life? God bless us with a word today of encouragement because everything else we do today, we need to know how to live this life live life the way Pastor Hicks just preached it from Psalm 90. One more time, come on, give God praise for that word. Let's make sure we practice that word because that's what Daniel was, full of life, and Jesus is the giver of life. Listen, uh, we're getting ready to transition at this moment. We do want not just to have a word about life and not give you an opportunity to connect with the giver of life, and that is Jesus Christ himself. So wherever you are, where you're standing, wherever you're st uh, sitting, should I say at this moment, if you ever want to bow their heads real quick, if there's someone here today who, who's not sure, we're not offering you religion. Religion can't save you. Uh, but there is a Christ who can. So today, if you, want, if you leave here today and you don't know, we all have to cross this way that Daniel has crossed. Amen? And when it's your time, are you sure about your eternal life? You can be sure about your eternal life by accepting Jesus Christ. And you don't have to work for it. He's already done the work. You just simply have to believe in him. So wherever you are with your head bowed, if you're not sure today, if you were to die and you wake up, would you spend eternity with Christ? If you want to be sure about that today, we'll simply just tell you, one, you have to believe that he lived, believe that he died, Believe that he rose again. Believe that he can save your soul. Enter into a relationship with him to be connected with the Father. Live, die, rose again, and that you can repent of your sins. Say, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. If you say, I need to have a relationship with Christ, and I want to be sure about it today, just kind of lift your hand where you are because we have wonderful people who are here today who can lead you through that process, myself, so many of these wonderful pastors who are here with us today, that when you leave here today, you, we can, you can see one of us, and we can lead you uh, to a relationship with Christ today. We want you uh, to look at Daniel's life, because listen, Daniel is not lost. He is with the Lord. Somebody say amen. And since he's with the Lord, if you love Daniel, then you'll recognize why he's the way he is because of his Lord. If 
you want to see Daniel again, you can connect with his Lord. Come on, one more time. Let's give God praise today. Now, you've been a wonderful congregation today, and I thank you. We appreciate you for uh, lifting up the name of Jesus, lifting up the life of Daniel, and giving encouragement to this wonderful family. Now, I need help one more time as we get ready to close. Uh, what we've asked uh, at this point, the family has asked, is that we're not going to open up the casket again for the public. Somebody say amen. Amen. We've been here a while, and we want to make sure we protect this family and give this family the strength that they need. And so we're going to gracefully thank you for coming and supporting at this time uh, and giving this family that support. But we're going to have a private time with just those that Abrisha and has given designation for at this time to have a parting view, and we'll do that. There will be a repass at the end of our time today, uh, but it is invitation only. And that means if did nobody tell you, you didn't get the invite. If you say, I didn't get the email, there's a reason. All right? So we want to make sure that's just for those family members that were designated. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so we're going to do that as we get ready to transition. If you could give me a song, if everyone would stand at this moment. I do want to thank all of our pastors that are here today. Can we give God praise for all these pastors? And thank God for all the special guests that were here today. Uh, we're so grateful for you. Once again, we want to thank Dr. Frederick Douglass Haynes III uh, for allowing us to use Friendship West Missionary Baptist Church. And so we thank God for you. Listen, if you are grieving and you're still in town and you don't have anywhere to, to, to get that out, uh, you have the Friendship West Baptist Church. You have the Oak Grove Baptist Church. You have Disciple Central Community Church at 930 in the morning. We have a place for you to come and worship and continue to have worship and walk through this process, not just today, but even after this time. We're now ready for uh, Lincoln. We want to thank you for your wonderful service. Can we give it up for Lincoln today and everybody who served and everybody who's participated? Amen. As we get ready uh, to be dismissed from this place. So we're going to wait. If we could at this moment, we're going to pray. And then we're going to ask you to quickly move to the foyer area and the family can have their private time uh, with Daniel at this moment. Thank you again. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this wonderful weekend of celebration. But now, God, we know that this, these events are over, but life must be lived. We thank you right now that this family, Brescia, sons, they know who you are. We pray right now for their strength for days, weeks, months to come. And we thank you, God, for the life uh, that Daniel has given. We thank you for the life of your son that now they can live with in the power of. As we leave this place, but not your presence, be with every soul. Help them prepare to go back carefully and safely to their assigned destinations. We love you. We give you praise. As a matter of fact, before we leave, we got to put our hands together one more time for the life of Daniel because we are so excited about all we get to celebrate in years to come because of his impact. Thank you for the word from Pastor Hicks and everyone here. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. All God's people say amen and amen. Thank you all. Please kindly move quickly. Take conversations uh, quickly to our foyer area. And we will give our family time to fellowship together. Thank you, Pastor Brown. Yes, yeah, we'll greet the family at a later time. So let's make sure we just go that direction. <laughs> Okay.
make sure we move expeditiously. So we're trying to make sure if you are not a part of the family, please exit if you have not been asked to stay here. We want to make sure we do this. We're trying to make sure we speed things up for our family. We've been here a while. So if someone can help me usher everyone else, all conversations, outside, outside, outside. If you're wondering if you're part of the family, that means you're probably not. Outside, <laughs> outside, all right? Unless they have someone, are, are these okay? All right, so I need to know everybody you want in here. But then if you don't want them, we want to ask them to get out. So I, I can see. So y'all, y'all hit me. And the way I know they're gone is the doors will close, all right? Once we see those doors close, then I know we can move forward and make sure everybody's straight. So once those doors close, that'll be a signal we are ready for the family in the view. Somebody say amen. All right, so we've been doing great. I know we're going to continue this. So at this moment, we have some wonderful uh, people coming here. Band, okay. And we're going to have the band come through. So if you could go ahead and start lining up, that would definitely help us. So how are you going to start from the back? All right, so we're going to start.